keep hoping, keep trusting and keep waiting on the Lord for he is tender hearted, kind and forgiving. God of faithfulness, always there, we worship you. Healing God, we come in the midst of brokenness seeking your mercy to restore us. Relying on your kindness and tenderness, we praise you. Drawn to the still centre in a world adrift, be our anchor. Unshakable God, in you may we find fresh peace and rest. Alpha and Omega, our hope is in you. May that same spirit which called Lazarus from the grave dwell in us this Passion Sunday and always. Amen. Welcome to this Pause for Thought. Wherever you are, whatever today holds for you, may you know the reality of God's love and provision today. He is near and his nearness makes a difference. As we observe Passion Sunday today, we're going to reflect on that truth. You might like to ponder anew how you have known the closeness of Christ in the midst of things going wrong. John 11 verses 1 to 45, the death of Lazarus. Now a man named Lazarus was ill. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay ill, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is ill. When he heard this, Jesus said, This illness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days. He stayed where he was two more days. Why does Jesus wait? Why doesn't he go at the moment he hears about Lazarus being poorly? In fact, why isn't he on the road even before word comes to him? God is in a slot machine that we feed our prayer requests to in anticipation of receiving the expected jackpot instantly. The God we keep company with can't be controlled or manipulated. Was it that in his humanity Jesus sat with the truth that he wasn't in control? Something that you and I are learning more than ever just now. Sometimes we have to sit with life in all its messiness, in all its out of controlledness, and discover that even there God is. Some of us encounter loved ones becoming ill. For most of us, our part will be to wait at a distance and in the waiting to discover afresh God with us. When God waits, when all wobbles, I keep trusting. That was the message that came to me through this picture. A picture which spoke to me of that truth that even when I can't see the sun, the sun is shining. Even when I don't feel God, God is near. Trust invites us in the midst of circumstances that don't make sense to continue to look around and see a world filled with grace and possibility. Trust invites us to continue to seek to be resurrection people who live proclaiming God's good news through our words and actions. Then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, 
A short while ago the Jews were there and tried to stone you, and yet you are going back? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So when he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Lord, if you had been here. Martha gives voice to what many of us may feel when life takes us in a direction we wouldn't choose, along a road we'd rather not travel. Lord, why didn't you stop it? Why didn't you step in? I asked you to be involved and yet this happened. I don't understand. Martha was looking for a reason in a situation where no reason would satisfy. Tough things happen and followers of Jesus are not exempt. Relentlessly asking why provides no solace. It can be easy to follow Jesus when all is going well, but when trouble comes all too quickly, our praise can turn into accusation. What amazing words of hope Jesus speaks to Martha and to all who suffer. I am the resurrection and the life. In other words, nothing is impossible for God. Nothing we can think of will ever have the final say. As the hymn writer puts it, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, we can be sure that no matter what, we will not be overcome. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? 
Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. God weeps with us. A professor recalls a life lesson he learned through his five-year-old son. The little boy in his first year of school spent much of the autumn term creating a ceramic present for his dad for Christmas. Finally, the last day of term arrived. As the little boy rushed towards his parents, clutching his treasure, he tripped and his project flew through the air, finally hitting the floor and smashing. The son was inconsolable. The dad embarrassed. Ruffling his son's hair, he said, It's okay. It doesn't matter. No, interrupted his wife. It does matter. It matters a whole lot. When the little boy had stopped crying, they gathered up the broken pieces. With his mum's imagination and a glue gun, out of the shattered fragments, a beautiful butterfly was created, which sat on he, the dad's desk thereafter. God weeps. Loss and pain matter. Through them we are held. Not to dismiss all that we feel, but to build us up. From desolate places, beauty can emerge. Space does not mean emptiness. Distance does not equal absence. We do not grieve alone. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus! Come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Where do we need to hear and heed Jesus' command? come out. How might our days be shaped differently if we lived trusting that God hears our prayers and answers? In what ways are we being invited to live out our faith? in such a way that others are attracted to find out more about the God who loves them, the God who keeps company with them, the God for whom nothing is impossible. As we pause to pray, thinking about the teardrops I wonder if you were to write the names of people and situations on those teardrops. What would you write? God of comfort, we remember all who grieve and mourn today because someone they love has died. 
We remember all who grieve and mourn because a door has closed, a job has been lost, a relationship has ended, a turn in the road has been reached. We remember all who grieve and mourn today because the future they planned has changed. Fear and anxiety have wrapped them round. Society has overlooked them. You who weep with all, hold everyone in your arms. Thank you that you weep with us as you wept with Mary and Martha. Comfort us as in your name we comfort others. Through your enfolding, may all find in you what they need. May we each discover that you are enough for each day. Now, we join all our prayers in those words that Jesus gave his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for watching. As you continue your day and week, know that you are remembered and prayed for. Please continue to be safe. Act sensibly. Stay secure in God. Heed the advice you are given. And for all in the St Neots and Huntingdon circuit, if there's any way in which your circuit staff can help you, please be in touch. In your watching and waiting, in the presence of God, in your weeping and wrestling, the peace of God, in your working and witnessing, the power of God, and in all your comings and goings, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace this day and every day. Amen.